On a hot day, the body tends to lose a great deal of water through the skin. So the posterior pituitary releases ADH, which is the antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone increases the permeability of water in the DCT and the collecting duct. So the DCT and collecting duct become more permeable to water, more water is retained, and the urine output is much lower. So the body is less dehydrated, the urine is more concentrated, and the urine output tends to be lower on a hot day. In order to understand water conservation, let's take a look at a section of the kidney. Here's the renal cortex, or the outer part of the kidney. And here's the renal medulla, which is the middle part of the kidney. We'll take a look at the renal tubule. Here is the PCT going down as the descending limb of the nephron loop, the nephron loop, and the ascending limb of the nephron loop. Here's the DCT and coming down is the collecting duct. In order to understand water conservation, we need to follow three rules. First, we need to understand that the body osmolarity is 300 milliosmolars. And so in the cortex also, the osmolarity is 300. As you keep going deeper into the medulla, the osmolarity increases until you get to the deepest point where it is about 1200. This is the first rule of water conservation. The second rule has to do with the fact that the, that the descending limb of the nephron loop is permeable to water, but it is impermeable to salts. The third rule has to do with the ascending limb of the nephron loop. This red line that you see depicts impermeability to water. The ascending limb is impermeable to water. However, it is permeable to salt. So that's what you see with these arrows, shows that salt is being pumped out of the ascending limb of the nephron loop. That is rule number three. Rule number four has to do with the DCT and the collecting duct. The collecting duct and the DCT become permeable to water in the presence of ADH. That is rule number four. So let's review the four rules. Rule number one, the renal medulla becomes saltier as you go deeper. Remember, we go from 300 milliosmolars to 1200 milliosmolars. So it gets saltier as you go deeper. Rule number two, the descending limb of the nephron loop is permeable to water, but it is impermeable to salt. So water can be reabsorbed in the descending limb of the nephron. So it's permeable to water, which is the most important thing to remember. Rule number three. The ascending limb of the nephron loop is impermeable to water, but it is permeable to salt. Rule number four, the DCT and the collecting duct are permeable to water only in the presence of ADH. If the levels of ADH are low, they will not be permeable to water and water will not be conserved. So they are permeable only in the presence of ADH. Let's take a look at how water is conserved on a hot day. 
So we'll begin with the PCT. At the PCT, the osmolarity is 300 milliosmolars. As the fluid goes down, as we know, the descending limb of the nephron loop is permeable to water. Here's the water. As this becomes permeable, water keeps leaving following the salt that's out here. So if it's 300 out here, the osmolarity is also 300. So when it's 500, water follows the salt even more and becomes 500, becomes isotonic to the outside. At 700, more water leaves and the inside becomes 700 as well. And then 900, 1100, 1200. So the water keeps leaving to follow the salt. As you turn up to the ascending limb of the nephron loop, salt is being lost being pumped out of the ascending limb and so the fluid inside becomes more dilute so from 1200 let's say it becomes a thousand 800 600 400 maybe even 100 so in the presence of ADH so let's Imagine that ADH levels are high and it's a hot day. So under the influence of ADH, the DCT is permeable to water, as is the collecting duct. So water is reabsorbed in the DCT and the collecting duct. So these numbers inside are going to change as well. So as water keeps following the salt, this becomes 300, this is 300, the 100 goes up to 300 here. And as you keep coming down, you have 500, 700, 900, 1100, and finally 1200. And the urine that comes out is concentrated. Let's take a look at what happens on a cold day when the level of ADH is very low or ADH is not even present. So we'll start again at the PCT. The osmolarity is 300 at the PCT. As the tubular fluid comes down the descending limb of the nephron loop, the um, water is reabsorbed. As the water is reabsorbed, the um, osmolarity inside the tube changes. So if the outside is 500, the inside is 500, 700, 900, 1100, and 1200, exactly as we did previously. Now, let's imagine that the tubular fluid is moving up the ascending limb of the nephron loop. Salt is being lost here. So the water becomes, the fluid becomes more dilute. So we have 1100, 1000, 800, maybe 600, 400, 100. So as the tubular fluid arrives at the DCT, it is hypotonic to body fluids. It's 100. When ADH is not present, the DCT and the collecting ducts are impermeable to water. So this red line represents that it's impermeable to water. So the osmolarity inside the tubular fluid remains at 100, no matter what's going on outside. Even if the outside is 500, the water cannot leave, cannot follow the salt. So it remains at 100 all the way when it comes out the urine is dilute <laughs>